being a pro bike rider is all about turning the pedals, but some of the riders out there actually love tinkering with bikes too. So I'm going to have a good old chat to a couple of guys I know and find exactly what makes their cogs turn. There's someone in particular who I really want to chat to. It's an old friend of mine and I'm running a little bit late. Good to see you, mate. Oh, about time, mate. I've got a <laughs> cafe to go to, eh? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. We go back a bit, actually, don't we? Yeah. Um, did you win a race that day or not? When I was second. Oh, right, okay. So I can't, I can't say that, you know, it's a real successful uh, assistant DS I was, but uh, hey, I was a good mechanic. But Chris Lawless, right, you absolutely love your tech. Yeah. You messaged me fairly often about bikes that I give a super nice in the tech show and you reckon they're Don't not deserve and, it. and no. stuff like that. So anyway, you're going to run through your bike with me because you love bike tech. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're with Team Ineos and you've got a pretty bling bike, I've got to say, but you do things on it which I didn't notice when I first had a look at it, so. Yeah, a couple of little things. Um, I think the first thing to start with, um, one of the first things that gets changed is my chain ring. Um, I just run a 54 standard, um, no matter what the race is really. So all year? Yeah, yeah, all year. Sometimes for real quick days, go up to a 55. Um, but yeah, for the majority of races, just a, a 54 ring, I think, with the way the racing's going now. Yeah. Um, just that extra tooth. Not so much um, at the end, it's more when you sat in the wheels, just gives you, it's just easier to yeah, stay fresh when you yeah. can just sit there and relax. and. Yeah, you don't have to be. You don't have to be spinning flat out. What, um, what inner ring? Do you always use the same or not? Yeah, What's still that? 39. Still 39. Yeah. Um, I think for me, when when it starts going uphill, I'm not really racing. So yeah. if I put a 34 on, I'll probably go slower. Yeah. Or a 36. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I may as well keep the 39 <laughs> on. Um, Gives the mechanics less work to do. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. Um, That's right. Speaking about mechanics, do you do a bit yourself or not? Yeah, I think. Well, I've got a funny story actually. When I was um, a kid. In primary school, people used to take things into assembly, like work they'd done at home, like pictures and stuff like that, and like connects models. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what I'm drinking in. My bike. When I was like, uh, I think I was 11, built my first first bike up from really? frame upwards. Um, so yeah, I've always been always been. Yeah, that's into it. impressive actually. I was. I was probably about 14, 13, yeah. something like that. So yeah, you've got one up on me there. Yeah, well, bikes are easier to build these days. When I was a kid, they were, uh, yeah, they were a nightmare. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so, um, and then yeah, um, I've got the sprint shifters down at the front. Yeah. But um, as you can see, I've got them pretty low down there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I've also got them turned upside down um, to what is usual. Just so when not just, I'm in, not just for the tour down under. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> just so when I'm in the drops, I don't need to reach my thumb over to the top of them. I just yeah, literally just, move it up. Yeah, slightly, just slide it up. Um, when I'm in that position. Um, That's a good idea. That. Yeah. It's, Does uh, anyone else do it? In your team. I, it was Cav who um, showed me that he did it. Um, yeah. So far, give it a whirl, and he's a. Uh, He's won yeah. quite a few races, hasn't he, really? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah may as well try advice. a few yeah. things he yeah. does. Two um, right. You've got a pretty long stem, haven't you? Yeah, it's a, that's a 14. Um, yeah. It took a while to come, actually, when the bikes first came out. Yeah. We only had uh, the longest we had for that width of bar was a 130. So, um, yeah, I got this fresh at December camp in Mallorca. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it just helped me get a bit, a bit longer. Um, yeah. And yeah, just try and tuck up a bit more, which uh, is why I have my saddle pointing a little bit down as well. I'm not sure what the actual, um, how much you're allowed tilting down. Yeah. Um, I think it might be about three degrees. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, back three to me. Yeah. I, I won't. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you've got a titanium clamp on there, don't you? 3D yeah. printed. That's yeah, pretty. titanium 3D printed clamps, um, which all come for our bikes anyway on the on the X Lite. Um, oh, yeah, last, yeah. Last year, we were um, most of us were just running the standard F12 apart from for Grand Tours. Yeah. Um, but now, um, I think pretty much the whole team's gone to X Lights for the yeah. whole year. Um, Saves so, a couple hundred grams, I guess, doesn't it? Yeah. Or something, it just so. makes it a, a little bit lighter. Yeah. Um, 
which is a good thing for me, especially because I just like to ride the C60s yeah. for pretty much every race. Um, they just, yeah, I just like a quick, quick rolling wheel, and yeah. I'm not making much time up on the climbs anyway, so I can save if I can go a bit quicker on the flat where I'm a bit better. Yeah, um, I'll choose to do that. Um, what about gearing at the bottom? What have you got in there? 28 for the, or For 30? this race, it's a 30. Yeah. Um, I've seen that I on think, a lot of bikes here, actually. 30. I think now for the majority of races, we just want to th run a 30. Yeah. And with the 11 speed, it's, it's not like when it was 10 speed, you've still got that extra extra gear. So the gears still aren't too close apart. Yeah. Um, the ratios are still pretty close. Um, so yeah, you can afford to run quite a big set. Yeah. Right. You, you critique my bike vaults. What's this then? You got you got a space rubber for the stem there, mate. <laughs> What's going on? I'm, uh, <laughs> only it recently, can't go unmissed. It can't go. Unmissed. I've only recently <laughs> dropped my dropped my bars, so yeah. I think uh, obviously cutting your steer is a a once a one time yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, because I only dropped them um, on the training camp. Mm. Um, I'm kind of just left that on top. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's not not much else really different. Um, I Although suppose, I have just seen that. Yeah, that's uh, that's cool. Yeah, that's just in case uh, the chain comes off. Even though we've got the chain catcher anyway. Yeah. Just in case there's a bit of chain slack and it gets wrapped around the chain ring and it just it protects that um, chain stay, so yeah. you don't have to. It's like a three D You don't have to change your change your bike if uh, you carry on pedaling when the chain wraps around and yeah. it goes through the frame. Which when you're racing flat out, yeah, it, if you're, it's, if you're... it's pretty easy to do. You're not gonna. You don't really think to back off when you're racing flat out. Um, so you can you easily <laughs> you can easily damage a frame by yeah. just dropping your chain. Um, and what, then, width, what width bars have you got by the way? There are 42 outside to outside. Yeah, you've not gone super narrow then? No, not super narrow. Like it's, it's what I'm comfy with. Yeah. Um, maybe I could potentially <coughs> save save a bit from going narrower, but um, I also yeah, I'm comfy with itself and yeah, yeah. I like the way it handles. Um, yeah, and it's not that often I'm actually riding on the front um, after it a few times, but yeah, it's not, it's not, not too to. often. Try yeah. not to. I'm, I've got a, got a severe allergy to the wind, so I try, I try, and, avoid, try and avoid racing on, uh, that's like, on the That's front. like me in the sun here, a severe <laughs> allergy. That's why you got a hat on today. Are many, are many riders into bike tech? Because I think a lot of, a lot of the older riders aren't really. There's a few, you know, there's a, like a handful I think are, but I think the younger generation probably are. Yeah, I think, I think the younger generation are because, are because it's just, um, yeah, it's just becoming more and more relevant. I suppose when some of the older guys were growing up, it was still, people were still racing around on aluminium frames and yeah. even steel frames to an extent um, when they were, like, when they were watching racing, whereas, like, since I've started watching racing, bike tech's just been growing and growing and growing. It's something that's always been thought about since I started racing. Yeah. So I think you just, it's like, like you see three-year-olds with iPhones now. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just what you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you they born know how to into, operate it, don't they? You know? So, um, yeah, yeah, but I think I'm a bit more interested than um, a few other riders across all disciplines, I suppose, like even mountain biking and yeah, yeah, because you cross. were telling me that on your was it on your YouTube feed? Yeah, it's like this is right, right, right. This isn't a lie or anything like that. Because you told me, and I was like, oh, come on, don't give me this. So, you, I'm going to interview you anyway. Um, you don't have to lie to me, yeah. but yeah, and you, you know, and it is the truth, isn't it? What's on your YouTube? Well, top of the list is isn't your channel? It's uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's GMBN Tech. <laughs> Doddy, uh, yeah. Constantly on my constantly on my laptop screen. Yeah. Um, then it's GCN Tech, then GMBN, and then GCN. That's which, right. I'm I'm above GCN, so that's all yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. That's just because of the tech, not because I like you. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you you even said to me though yesterday we had we had a good chat, didn't we? You know, we had a good catch up. Yeah. It's been a while, and you actually said that when you retire and you stop racing, which is going to be a long time, a long time from Hopefully. now. Hopefully. You'd like to do my job. You want yeah, to take my uh, job. <laughs> you just get to look at bike tech, don't you? And yeah. You'd love yeah. it, I reckon. Yeah, now you've got this F12 uh, winter bike at home and it's got mud guards on it and you're desperately 
wanting to send it into the bike vault, but you know if you send it in and it's anything wrong on it, it's just going to get a nice. And I yeah. love that, the, the fact that you know I'm waiting for you. <laughs> the thing is, I live and train on the Isle of Man, so the roads are always pretty filthy, so you'll clean your bike, yeah. go out the door, and then it'll be filthy again. So, yeah, it's hard to get a picture on a ride, and I, I know it gets super nice with yeah. Mate, it's been great to chat to you, and uh, I'm looking forward to geeking out again because yeah. you know we could talk about tyres, pressures, all that the stuff. You obsess over that. I, I don't really, you know, I just get on and ride. But uh, yeah, it's your job. So it's yeah, different, isn't I think there's definitely gains to be made. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, it's becoming more and more relevant to stay in touch with and up to date with a bike tech, and it's basically where I'm. Um, getting an advantage without training, isn't it? Yeah. More time in the cafe then. <laughs> I, like the, I like the thinking behind that. Right, good luck for Cheers. the season. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Of course, I couldn't do a tech video about pros who love bike tech without speaking to Adam himself. So, right, I'm gonna let you start in a minute about your bike. But first of all, how did you get into tinkering with bikes? Tinkering with bikes. Tinkering, I think that's a, it's a nice, yeah. nice way of calling it, isn't it? Playing around with bikes. Well, back in the days, I um, used to be a member of White Weenies. That's where we first met. <laughs> and um, I used to have, okay, everything different. Now it's a bit harder because we're a bit restricted, but um, so more, it's about, yeah, position, type of frame we can choose, type of handlebars. Um, but yeah, so basically with my position now, I'm still running my 38 centimeter handlebars width, which is as narrow as you can go yep. with these. <laughs> um, I try and have a negative stem drop so I can um, be as low as possible. I have my seat, which is angled downwards. Yeah. So this just rotates my pelvic quite a bit and just opens up the hip joint angle so I can apply more power. Um, my seat is as far forward as possible. I have uh, a seat post that should be the other way, but I've rotated it forward so I can get that, um, the seat more forward. Yeah. So if you look at time trialists, they will always be five centers behind the bottom bracket because UCI rules is five centers behind the mm -hmm. bottom bracket. So I try and get to as close as that as possible because for me as a rider, that's the position that I ride. So if I'm riding on the front, helping the lead out, chasing the breakaway, I'm in a TT position. Yeah. So the whole idea is to get my body in that position where I can produce high power for a long duration, being super narrow at the front with the lower handlebars. Right, when you first started running those bars, there was all these people, oh, what on no, earth is he doing? What on earth? But now, if we look around, there's a lot of people yeah. doing it. I mean, yeah. Trendsetter, yeah, that calls I, that. I did it in, um, I think, 2009. And the funny thing is when I transferred from HTC to Omega Pharma, the mechanics saw it and they said, oh, this is wrong. I was like, no, 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 38. So they're like, uh, but we don't have 38. Just, and I looked on the website. Not for children. <laughs> but the women's, women's handlebars had it. So I was yeah. riding with women's handlebars because they had 38. Yeah. But yeah, the whole idea was, okay, your handlebars should be the width of your shoulders. Yeah. But even when I ride, I have my, um, wrist rotating inwards. So just trying to get as narrow as possible. Well, that's how I just completely ride. Because yeah. if I'm like this, then um, you sort of have to use the muscles. Yeah, you to put say that we're here, yeah. yeah, I can just, just relax and yeah. I can hold that position. So I love my bars. Um, a lot of guys have changed. A lot mm. of guys were totally against the start, but now, and when you're in the bunch, it's so nice to go through little, little tight <laughs> spots. It really makes a really big difference in that sense. Some of the things that Campag changed was we used to have the charging mechanism here. Yeah. Had some cables hanging out. Now it is hidden in here. That's really neat. And I said in another really video cool. yeah. that that, I think, it's is brilliant. more elegant than the Shimano one because you can't accidentally press it in, can you? Yeah. I don't think with that. And it's, it is. Oh, it's just really nice looking. Yeah. I like that. For me, that's, um, that's a huge thing. For the mechanics, must be a nightmare. Because yeah. the crazy thing is, this is a normal stem and all the cables go through the bike. Oh yeah, so they pop out, out from the center of the handlebar there, yep. don't they? and then go through, yep. and then into the fork. Yeah, so the, the fork now is a D shape. That's why the bolt is not in the center. Yep. So actually the center of the steering shoe fork is here. Yeah. And at the front, all here, it's all open. So the cables go here, run through, and they spread out all internal yeah. throughout the pipe. So what, since, you know, those days of weight weenies, many, many, when well, that's like 15 years ago probably now, yep. bikes have evolved. 
so much. So much. What yeah. would you say is the biggest, biggest change since then to now? I mean, I'm putting you on the spot here. You I'm really are. sorry. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't brief you that I'd be asking you this. The biggest change. Because frames, they've got a little bit lighter. But back then, that actually, when you look back then, the, there was there a was Scott still, CR1 yeah. that was super light. Yeah. That was super light. And do you remember the tune hubs and things like this? Yeah. So you could build tune skyline or uh, something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, why do we still remember this stuff? I don't know. Um, <laughs> we need to find a new hobby. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Aerodynamics. Yeah. That's the thing. Wheels. Wheels are actually wheels have gotten heavier. Do you remember the the Renault wheels? Renault rims. Yeah. You can get them for 180 grams. Yeah. You can get rims lighter than the tires. It was crazy. Yeah, very shallow section yeah. rims. Yeah. yeah. So now, um, okay, the rims are they're, they're a lot heavier these days, more aerodynamic, much more wider. That's one thing. Tire width has actually increased. So I used to race on 19 millimeter yeah. tofu tires. Yeah. Made yeah. in the Czech Republic. Yeah. The, the, the lightest ones you could also buy. Um, so the tire width is getting a lot bigger. The um, the, width, the rims width are getting a lot wider. Frames are more aerodynamic. The bottom bracket axle has actually increased in diameter size. So back in the olden days, yeah. it used to be a lot more narrow. Um, now it's all press fit, where before it was um, threaded. Disc. Yeah. It's it's, it's so many things have, have come along, haven't they? And yeah. it's funny, really, with a bike. You know, you think a cylindrical tube is so un, un aerodynamic, yeah. really. Yeah, you know, so we're getting bikes which you know getting more more fancy shape. Are you a big fan of the really wild and wacky frames? Because I know you've got that zip Y frame. I saw a soft ride yesterday. Oh, yeah, out there. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> with, with the, the black yeah, zips, yeah. right, with the yellow decals, and yeah. it was like uh, eight speed Dura Ace STIs. Yeah. I was like, I wonder who the owner is. I want to cool. meet yeah. this person. But um, yeah, I, I love like the wacky frame designs. Yeah. Oh, I'm but, a big fan of yeah. huge fan of it. I'm, I, I when, when I stop cycling yeah. and I get into triathlons, yeah, what? I'm oh, joking. I'm a, I know you've done what you did in Ironman, didn't you? Not yeah, I did in Ironman, Florida. Yeah, I'm going to make my own frame, and it's going to be almost like a zip frame, Man. and it's going to be totally wild. It'll be yeah. nothing traditional at all. It'll be <laughs> pure just for aerodynamics. That's where triathlon is so far ahead of yeah. cycling, isn't yeah. it? Because you can do whatever you want. Yeah, there's no rules. Near enough. You can yeah. do anything. Something which I want there to be a change somewhere along the line of bottles. Yeah. Bottles have, have yeah. been bottled, they've been the same since, Ever since. like 1910, 1910 yeah. 1909 or something probably. And they must be able to change somehow. I mean, we've had slightly aero ones and stuff, but no one's really, I think because they're a bit more difficult to put back in the bottle. Yeah. But, but if you think gauge. of a way, there was, um, I actually can't remember the brand off head, but what, like what I'd like to see one day is, that the bottles actually go into the down tube. Yeah. That I think... Be, there's no reason, like totally inside. Was it Trek who did it on a TT bike? Maybe. Yeah, they had a straw or something. It's, oh, and the triathlon scene, it's oh, all, yeah, everyone it's does all that, internal. Don't they? Yeah. It's all internal. It must get ever so mouldy in yeah. there. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure when you make your frame, you'll think about that. But For sure. Yeah, I, I think just being able to, to speak to you about you know, why you're doing these things. I mean, and I've not even got onto your shoes yet. Do you mind if I pick one up? Sure. Because, oh, well, they're mind blowing, aren't they? These are, sl I think these are slightly different to the ones yeah, last so year. These, well, these are the training ones, they're the heavier ones, much heavier than the last oh, ones. Oh, so heavy, these. Yeah, yeah they're, actually, they're... compared to the other ones, they are. Because <laughs> um, I'm having two riders use them this year. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> won't say the names just yet. No, so these no. are the real. We'll keep that. We'll keep that between us and them. <laughs> the VDG ones. <laughs> um, but I'm just still got the 3D printed part at the bottom. Yeah. Which I find is, for me, it's the best system. Yeah. And I normally have the carbon Kevlar, but these are the training ones. So I have the bolts there. Yeah. Um, and these ones you can, these ones you can literally throw at a concrete wall with no problem. I have complete faith. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I, I, and I don't want you to do that either. But. But yeah, also, I, I, no, I believe you that you could. <laughs> also, like the, I think the last ones that we were we sat here. With yeah, we sat, yeah, we had a good chat. So on the top, I had 65 gram per uh, 65 gram per square meter of cloth. Here, I have 600. Wow. So this ten this, times. This is ten times thicker, um, and it's just for training shoes. So yeah. with these, I can throw my suitcase. Don't have to be afraid. Um, I can walk on anything. It's really bulletproof. These ones. Yeah. Are you, you going to race in them this week? Or? Um, I have a light pair here also. Yeah. Um, but the idea is I want to, because now that I'm actually producing these for riders, I want to give them a shoe like this, where they can train in, they can have no fear, yeah. and then also give them a super light pair 
for racing. Cool. And you've got... Did you have an inner sole in there before? Well, it's like a liner, isn't it? Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm just testing different things at the moment because yeah. I'm having other people use them. So now I have uh, like an inner sole there, and you probably notice also I got one on the top, tongue. which yeah. I didn't have before. Um, and because when I make them for myself, like as you can see, you can see my bones and yeah. everything. It's, inc it's incredible. Um, for me, it's easy to do, but now that I'm going to do it for other people, I, I want to do just to make sure like how I can make it more where I can just produce it, give it something that works. Yeah. So their first model will be like this. And then once they tell me, yes, it's good, I'll start taking some other material out, make it lighter and then give them the lighter version later on. <laughs> and you looked at me when I said about tinkering earlier on, like, tinkering? <laughs> <laughs> It's brilliant. I just wish people could reach out from their screens and just feel how light they are. Because in fairness, these ones are, I remember last year, the ones you showed me, these ones are heavier. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and noticeably actually, yeah, yeah. which I, I didn't think would be possible. These but, are 140 grams. Yeah, for a pair. And they're really like, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's seriously, it is. <laughs> it is so stiff. It's like you could try and. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not going to break. It's uneven. Yeah. And of course, your, your cleats are set back yeah. just a little bit more, aren't they? Yep. Well, also, with these ones, you see um, this section here is a lot bigger because yeah. the other riders, they want their cleats further up. So I'll have okay. the three bottom there. So yeah. I can have part. Yeah. See, a lot of people say that, mate, toe over that. I remember reading a comment, oh, he must have loads. But how often are you pedaling in that exact position, turning the wheels that, you know, the bars that much? Very, very. Yeah, yeah very, very. And, and you soon get used to, oh, you to the feel of it anyway, don't you? Oh, you know, like when the the last stage was up here and yeah. we had that hairpin corner. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just couldn't pedal two strokes around yeah. the corner. That's it. Yeah. So you just roll through it. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. I'm going to let you uh, go and get changed, but thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. <sighs> There we are, a casual chat with a couple of pros who absolutely love their bike tech. I wonder if Adam could knock up one of these in carbon. That's a challenge for him, isn't it? Let me know what you thought about this video down there in the comments section below. And as ever, remember to like and share this with your friends too. Don't forget to check out the shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. For two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here. And well, I'm going to try and find the steering wheel for this and take it out.